A Sunday School Lesson for July 17, 2016. Lesson 7 is taken from Unit 2, which is titled, A World Gone Wrong. Our lesson title is, To See or Not to See. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Our background scripture is from Psalms 148 and from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 21 through 31. And our printed text is also from Romans, the third chapter, verses 21 through 31. And our key verse, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans three twenty two through twenty four. Our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson, we see that Paul recalls Paul's good news of God providing Jesus Christ as a way for humankind to reestablish his loving, obedient relationship with God. Also, to feel hope for getting right with God by believing in Christ Jesus. And thirdly, confirm your belief in Jesus Christ as Savior and pledge anew to follow Him, to see or not to see. After showing in chapters 1 through chapter 3 and verse 20, the utter failure of all mankind to obey God and all human accomplishment falls short of God's glory and standards and that, that all mankind justly stands up under God's wrath. We see now how that God has seen our need and then how that God has met our need by his intervention in mercy and grace for us through Jesus Christ. For we read in verse 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now this righteousness is not the righteousness of man which is being revealed. First of all, we understand that what is righteous? Righteous means to be upright, virtuous, doing what is right, not according to what we think or what we feel, but according to God's standards. And 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 the and the Word of God tells us that all of man's righteousness is or as filthy rags in the sight of God. So there, there's nothing of our own accomplishments that we can do that would be really meet the standards that God requires. But here in this 21st verse, it said, but this is the righteousness that God has provided for us. Why? Because of his mercy and his grace. For 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30 states, but of him. Are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? Also, we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, where it says, For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him that God had made Jesus Christ to be a sin offering 
for us so that we might be made, that we might acquire the, the righteousness that God requires, not of ourselves, but in Jesus Christ. So we see that God alone is the one who provides this righteousness, and, and we can't provide it because it is a righteousness which God demands. And then also, he don't only demand it, but God provides it for mankind. And we just need, we just need to accept it by faith. It says that in being witnessed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, mean that the law bore witness to this righteousness in that in that at the very center of the mosaic system it was blood bloody sacrifices which was offered that was types of Christ that pointed to Christ Jesus and also the prophets witnessed to them when they spoke of the coming of Christ his death and his resurrection Isaiah 53 say what that he was wounded for our transgression, and that he was bruised for our nicotine. This was prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was born, before he ever came on the scene. So, so the prophets told of his coming, of his death, and his resurrection. And so we see in verses 22 and 23 where it states, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God for the righteousness of God is by faith in Christ Jesus unto all this righteousness from God is attained by faith in Jesus Christ and is available to all. For John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is not limited to a certain ethnic group or nation or nationality but it's it is available to all. And then it is upon all that believe. Those that accept this free gift and and believe that Jesus died for their sin, then this righteousness is imputed to their account. And so it is a it is available. Why? Because all mankind needs a Savior. For we see in, in uh, the 23rd verse, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In the first three chapters of the book of Romans, Paul shows where that all have sinned. Those who was so-called so far back in the in, in, in the primitive the land that, that they see, those who supposedly have been the, the moralists, those civilized people that, that they see, the people, the Jews, the ones that God had, 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 had gave his law to, his articles to, those who had direct contact and had the direct knowledge of what he required, that they see. So now that the whole world, that all mankind has has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so and so that God made this righteousness available to all because all need a savior. We find in verse 24 where it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being justified freely by his grace. To be justified means to be cleared of the charges, recognized as righteous, cleared in God's 
court. Why? Not because we were innocent, but because Christ had paid the debt of justice. Christ had paid the debt that God holiness demanded. And then, since the debt has been paid in full, that the judge, who is God, now he can treat us as if we have not sinned. Why? Because the righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed into our account. Why? Because, because we have accepted by faith that Jesus paid the debt. And so now, and so all this is imputed to us, not because we deserve it, but it's by God's grace, God's unmerited favor. For it says that God who is rich in mercy, when when we was yet in in trespasses and sin, that Christ died for us. For it is by grace that we are saved through faith. And it's not of ourselves. It is a gift to God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We have nothing to boast about. This is by God's grace and his grace alone. That 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 we have redemption. That word redemption means to buy. That is, in a sense, is to buy slaves in the market in order to set them free. And when you redeem something, a price has to be paid for that redemption and for that possession. And the price was paid with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. For we find in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 where it states, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your father. That is your vain way of life. But we have been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot and blemish. That we have been received grace, that we had received redemption through Christ's blood and, and which is propitiation. His blood has provided whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. That is that in his blood through faith, the death of Jesus Christ for us as a substitute for us sinners. He's the righteous one. He suffered the just penalty for our sins that God might adequately and, and that his holiness would be judicially satisfied. And God's holiness is satisfied, therefore demonstrates his justice. God would not have been a holy and a just God if he had, a, had not totally judged sin. But now that sin has been judged, that Jesus propitiation, his death is the satisfaction that that so that now that God could be just and he could be the justifier of those which believe in Christ Jesus. It says that Jesus is our propitiation. And not only I but his blood was enough to be the propitiation for the whole world. Therefore, that God, that God can remain true to who he is, his character, that he is holy. But God also is love. So God has set forth, sent forth Jesus to come and to satisfy all the righteous demands of the law. And then that makes it a satisfaction for us. And therefore, God now can, though we are bankrupt, God can impute, God can add to our account the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Why? Only by because we have faith in what Jesus done as our substitute on Calvary's cross. And so we see in, in, in verse um, 
in, in verses 27 and 28 where it states where is boasting then it is a, excluded by what law of works nay but by the law of faith therefore we can that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Where is the boasting? We have nothing of ourselves to boast about. Since justification is by faith alone, it excludes boasting. All boasting depends upon some supposed superiority earned through a system of meritorious works. Well, we feel that we done did something, so we have earned, you know, since 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 we have kept the so-called law or this. But see, but that really talks about it is a thing of pride in a person that is pride of accomplishment. That's what boasting is. But justification by faith depends totally on the merciful act of God in Jesus Christ's death. That's how we are justified. There is nothing we can do to be justified. And, and the Word of God constantly teaches us that, that we are justified by faith and by faith alone. All through the Old Testament, it's in, in, in the book of Genesis, 15 and 6, it said that Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. In Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, it says that the just shall live by faith. So it always had been by faith, and not by the works of the law. For Galatians 2.16 states, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The law cannot justify the individual. For, for the main reason, an individual cannot completely keep the law. The law exposes sin. And so, and so to be made right before God, even the best of us, we cannot do it. And we cannot keep the law. That's why the sacrifices was brought forth that... Looking, looking forward to when the perfect sacrifice, when the, when the perfect, when when the perfect Lamb of God would come forward, that He would, He would justly satisfy God's holiness by His complete obedience to the will of God. We find in verses twenty nine and and thirty where it states, "Is He the God of the Jews only?" Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God who shall, who shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Is he the God of the Jews only? There is only one God. In the Old Testament, he gave man the law. Man failed. God didn't save them by their keeping of the law. Salvation was always by sacrifice, which man brought in faith, pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, but it was by faith. Now, by men, by circumcision, he, he was talking about the, the nation Israel, which which had a covenant. The circumcision was a 
sign of the covenant that God had made with the nation here. But they still, they still were saved by faith. Not because of who they were, not because of the deeds that they they uh, 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 tried to observe. But, but they were saved by, they believed God and trusted in what he said. And so those who are the uncircumcised, those who are the Gentile nation, and that they are saved through faith. They are saved by believing that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. They are saved by having the faith in, in the redemption and the complete work of Jesus Christ, that, that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and raised the third day according to the scriptures. And so, Jew or Gentile, we all are saved by faith. Habakkuk say that the just shall live by faith. And Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Added to his account. All through the annals of, of history and mankind's existence, we have seen, if we look at the scripture, how that the best, the best of all mankind in one way and another have fallen short of the glory of God. But there was only one that came forth. That was God man, the man God in the person of Jesus Christ. The only one who God has said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so we see that in verses 31 where it reads, Do we then void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. By the law here, we may understand the whole of the Mosaic law in its rites and ceremonies of which Jesus Christ was the subject and the end. All those festivals, those different sacrifices, they pointed to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were a type of Christ. They were just shadows of the body, the body being Christ. All the laws had respect unto him. And the doctrine of faith in Christ, which the Christian's faith proclaims, established the very claims and demands of, of that law by showing it was all accomplished in the passion and death of Christ Jesus. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And that Jesus came and fulfilled every jot and tittle of the law. And that because of that, in him shedding his blood was that for the forgiveness of sin. And that also that Jesus was that Lamb of God which was slain before the foundation of the world. And that in whose blood in his blood that we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. So now we need to understand that there is a righteousness from God that has been revealed. A righteousness that, that God has provided himself. A righteousness that the best of us, we could not provide for ourselves. But God being who he is. A God of love and a God of mercy. That since it was sin by man that sin came into the world. That it was also had to be by a man that the debt had to be paid. And then so since the best of men could not pay the debt in full. That they could not be a 
propitiation, that they could not be a total satisfaction to the holiness of God, and that God, who is rich in mercy with his great love, with which he loved us, that God became a man himself in the person of Jesus Christ, and he came and died to, to redeem us, to redeem us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. This is a great lesson that we have before us. It shows us that, that in spite of ourselves, the worst of us, even the best of us, don't meet up. But God who loves us so much that, that God was willing to sacrifice his best for us so that we can have fellowship and be restored and be reconciled unto him. So, so this is a beautiful lesson, realizing that, that a man is not justified by the deeds of the law. That is only through faith in Jesus Christ and that all of us, all of us that we stand before God, not on our own merit, that we all are no better than the other, but we only stand before him because we are in Christ Jesus. May God bless you and keep you.